Long before the first Dodge cars were built in 1914, John and Horace Dodge had a reputation of excellence in the transportation industry. In the late 1800s, they built bicycles before trying their hand at automotive parts for Oldsmobile and Ford. So impressed with their design and craftsmanship, in late 1902, Henry Ford offered the brothers Dodge a 10% stake in his company if they would supply major components for his cars. By 1910, they were building a new factory in Hamtramck, Michigan, and fast becoming the world's largest automotive parts company. It was at their Hamtramck factory where the Dodges made transmissions, engines, and other components that went into Ford's legendary Model T, the car that put much of the world on wheels. After more than a decade of supplying Ford parts, the Dodge brothers terminated their contract, partly out of frustration with Ford's refusal to improve his product. John and Horace set their sights on building their own car. On July 17, 1914, the Dodge Brothers Company was chartered in Michigan. John and Horace were confident they could build their own cars. They said, someday all those Model T owners are going to want to buy an automobile. On November 14, 1914, those buyers had their chance. The first Dodge car, dubbed Old Betsy, rolled off the line. The new cars sold well and quickly established the Dodge Brothers' reputation for dependability and value. To make sure they were delivering the best product possible, the Dodge Brothers often carried out vehicle testing on their own, dropping tires off roofs and even personally crash testing their cars. So exacting were their standards that their slogan, Dependable, coined the word dependability and became synonymous with the Dodge car. These reliable cars were even popular on the international front. The first right-hand drive Dodge was shipped to Australia in August 1915. And in Mexico, early Dodge vehicles earned their stripes on the battlefield. U.S. Army General John Pershing used Dodge cars for field testing in his efforts to oust Mexican warlord Pancho Villa. By 1916, Lieutenant George S. Patton took part in the first motorized charge in the U.S. Army's history in Dodge touring cars. Within five years of building their first car, the Dodge brothers had expanded their lineup and built a yearly total of 121,000 vehicles with sales of $24 million. But tragedy came on the heels of success. Just months apart, both John and Horace Dodge died in 1920 from influenza. But their company philosophy remained. Dodge vehicles continued to be known for their durability and dependability. In 1922, Dodge became the first U.S. automaker to introduce a closed car with an all-steel body. Dodge also became the first U.S. car maker to open an assembly plant in Europe. This new facility in northwest London started by importing light truck components and assembling them for British markets. Several years after their death, Dodge Brothers' heirs sold the company to an investment bank. In 1928, Walter P. Chrysler, head of the world's fifth largest automaker, set his sights on the company. He was attracted by its loyal owners, dealers, and its superb production facilities. Papers were signed on the afternoon of July 30th. With that purchase, Chrysler increased its size at least five times, suddenly making Chrysler the world's third largest automaker. Chrysler gained manufacturing capability. Dodge products benefited from Chrysler's renowned engineering department. Fred, I think you and your engineers have done a great job. You've not only retained the outstanding features you put into our 1932 Dodge cars, but you've gone beyond what I expected could be accomplished. It's got that good old Dodge dependability, plus everything that the public want today. Chrysler designers and engineers worked to uphold that Dodge Brothers tradition of dependability while introducing draft-free ventilation, synchronized front and rear springs, and hydraulic brakes. Dodge products in Britain were now sold as Chrysler's, and truck production was moved to Chrysler's London Riverbank home where the popular semi-forward control vehicle was built. The driver sat above the engine rather than behind it, so the vehicle was more compact better suited for European roads. In 1933, Dodge adopted its famous Ram symbol, using it as a hood ornament on new Dodges. 
Walter Chrysler picked it after the sculptor quipped, The ram is the king of the trail, and if you encounter one, you dodge. American Beauty, the name given to the loveliest of flowers, and in a broader sense, a title symbolic of outstanding beauty. And that's why the new Dodge has won instant acclaim as the American Beauty of Motordom. In the 30s and under Chrysler control, Dodge anchored the mid-priced market, offering quality and value while maintaining Dodge's reputation for dependability that was unmatched by any other automaker. The U.S. government came to rely on Dodge dependability during World War II. Dodge built parts, aircraft engines, and nearly 400,000 trucks were crucial to the U.S. war effort. Among the many truck designs used during the war, the 4x4, which became known as the Power Wagon, was among the most durable. It was another example of Dodge's ruggedness and power. It remained in production as a military and civilian vehicle as late as 1970. The first post-war Dodges came to market in 1946 to overwhelming public demand. In Europe, only Dodge trucks were built. British-built ones were exported worldwide. In the U.S., a new line of pilot house style pickups was introduced in 1948, boosting sales across the line. Into the 50s, the Dodge slogan was still dependability, but it was designer Virgil Exner who would change Dodge's image from a reliable family car to something with sex appeal. The Exner touch included chrome, fins, and flare. But it wasn't just what was on the outside that was turning heads. Beneath Dodge's hood, Yes, and the V8 engine. This new high-performance engine, known as the Red Ram, was Dodge's version of the Chrysler Hemi design. It quickly made a name for itself. Shortly after it was introduced, it won two races. And in 1954, for the first time ever, a Dodge, known for its dependability, paced the Indianapolis 500. By the late 50s, Dodge was sporting bolder fins and lowered bodies. Designs that won both admiration and attracted criticism worldwide. Just a few years later, the design excesses were seen as just that, excess. Dodge quickly brought to market a tamed-down compact car, the Lancer, built with unibody construction and powered by the famous Slant 6 engine. A bigger model, the Dodge Dart, was available with a larger engine, upholding Dodge's new performance reputation. And the race is on! Hemi V8 stuffed into lighter weight cars like the Dart couldn't help but go fast, really fast, and help make Dodge a contender on the racetracks and drag strips. John Garlitz leads off in his Dodge Power AA dragster against Ron Abbott in Hell's Apartment. Joining the muscle car craze, Dodge unveiled the Charger in 1966. The Hemi powered stock cars tore up the track and helped give the Dodge brand a race competition image. The Zenith came when a modified Dodge Charger Daytona ran 200 miles per hour, setting a closed track speed record. Dodge models like the Charger, Coronet, and later the Challenger were packed with power, performance, and created fierce owner pride. That Dodge pride was apparent in markets outside the U.S. too. The Dart, outfitted with a Spanish-made diesel engine, leather upholstery, and air conditioning, was successful in the late 60s and today is highly prized by collectors. Besides Spain, Darts were built in Canada, Brazil, Colombia, and Australia. Peru and Venezuela, the Dodge Coronet. Fuel crises, safe driving concerns, and emissions controls eventually squashed the muscle car era, but not before Dodge had one last hurrah. The Little Red Express. Our performance pickup claimed the title of fastest U.S. production vehicle, beating out the Chevrolet Corvette in 1978. Dodge has Europe to thank for a phenomenally successful small car that took a direct shot at the small Japanese and European imports. The hatchback Dodge Omni was based on the Chrysler Horizon, created by Chrysler Europe. It was voted European Car of the Year in 1978. The model had a short life in Europe, but redesigned for the U.S. market and built in America, it became a huge success. It was the first front-wheel drive subcompact car. The souped-up GLH version, with the letters rumored to mean goes like hell, was a link to Dodge's performance past. 
Despite the popularity of the Omni, Dodge and the Chrysler Corporation were running on fumes. Chrysler Corporation lacked the capital and investor confidence needed to develop a new generation of fuel-efficient cars. The U.S. government provided a loan guarantee helping the Chrysler Corporation develop new products. With this government lifeline, Dodge returned to its roots, dependable, value-for-the-dollar transportation. Futures here and Chrysler has what you waited for. A brand new generation, Chrysler's K-Car Super Star. The K cars, not sexy but solid, reliable cars, helped turn the Chrysler Corporation around, along with a completely new vehicle, the front-wheel drive minivan. The Dodge Caravan, along with its sister model, the Plymouth Voyager, changed the look of America's driveways forever. Riding on the coattails of the K car and minivan's success, the Dodge brand was on the road to recovery. 80s models, built on the K car platform, like the Dodge Daytona, Dynasty, Shadow, Shelby Lancer, and Spirit RT had the right Dodge attitude, but Dodge fans wanted the return of real power. Chrysler Corporation management agreed. It was time to take chances and produce capable, high-performance vehicles that even John and Horace will be proud of. In 1982, Dodge power and excitement was back with the production Viper. Limited numbers of these Vipers were exported to markets outside North America and badged as Chrysler Vipers. Just one year later, Dodge wowed them again with its new LH platform cars. The cab forward design was roomy, comfortable, and well engineered. A modern take on Dodge's traditional quality, practicality, and value. Dodge also revamped its truck lineup featuring big rig styling in its Dakotas and Rams. These re-engineered trucks helped put Dodge back into serious sales contention. Dodge proved itself a truck leader when it introduced the quad cab, the industry's first two rear-hinged rear doors with inside handles. With all these exciting new products, Dodge decided it was time to return to NASCAR racing and bring back the famed Hemi engine. Can you say Hemi? Hemi. And buyers are saying Hemi. The new engine is powerful and has surpassed all expectations. Packaged in bold Dodge designs, it's giving the brand a whole new energy and drive. An energy and drive that would delight John and Horace Dodge even today. Building on the brand's early days of quality and durability, Dodge continues to uphold its heritage of dependable, well-engineered, bold, powerful vehicles. <laughs>